Welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Jerry. Uh, this is week three of my EJPT learning journey. I completed this week the network attacks section of the course. So this covered how to use Wireshark, how to use T-Shark, um, and how to perform a couple of like network attacks and analyze packets. It was a very short course. Um, I think it took me about two hours to actually complete. It said it was about four and a half hours, but I think it took me about two hours. Um, like really simple labs, really straightforward content. And yeah, it was good. It was, it was pretty good. So if you're not familiar with Wireshark, it's a network protocol analyzer. So basically what it does is it breaks down um, the network traffic that you can see on a network um, that's going through your computer and it puts it in a nice like visual format. So it comes out as a list uh, and it helps us to visualize kind of like what traffic looks like, what kind of things are, and you can kind of follow the packets from there. Now there's a command line version of this, which is T-Shark, which we also go through. Um, and it's, it's pretty much the same thing, except not as pretty. Um, and it's more helpful for like automating tasks um, so you can put it in scripts and then output the data in it to another tool um, to be able to analyze better and get better results and that kind of thing. That was pretty good. It was pretty straightforward. Um, we got to, in one of the labs, we got to do art poisoning. In the scenario, uh, we wanted to intercept traffic between two IP addresses. So we pretended to be the recipient IP addresses for both of those. So we sat in the middle. Um, which is known as a man in the middle attack. And so then when say IP address one sends out a request or a message to IP address two, then it would send it to us. We would pass it on and we then we would receive from number two to number one. So we would be in the middle and would go back and forth and act as a middleman. So in that way, we can actually read and view packets um, that they are sending to each other uh, and in this lab we actually got to see like a telnet uh, login which is kind of why um, we've implemented ssh instead of telnet because it's clear text it's not encrypted uh, and if someone is able to poison up and stand in the middle then they will be able to read all kinds of all of the information that's going across. it was actually a really simple lab but actually really fun um, I'd love to be able to set it up within my house. Uh, my thoughts on the actual network course modules was uh, pros were like, it was a good intro to those technologies. I'd used Wireshark before in my, um, in my uni studies. So it wasn't the first time. I think if it was my first time, it would be a little bit overwhelming. If I didn't understand a lot of the networking stuff, it would probably be really overwhelming and kind of like, I don't know what to do with this. But again, that's like a prerequisite to taking the course. The other pro is that it was actually really nice having a short course after having such a long uh, course on exploitation. For me, it felt like really long. It probably wasn't. I probably didn't dedicate um, that much time to it to be able to complete it quickly because um, I was just doing life things. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was really nice to have a short course after doing that. Uh, the other thing I would probably say, there's a couple of things that I probably would say maybe room for improvement would be that the labs are not as interactive as I would have hoped, uh, especially when interacting things with things like T-Shark and Wireshark. Because you're using it in the command line, I think it would have been really helpful to have a lab where you could actually analyze traffic. You would get something that would send um, I don't know, maybe like ping requests or something to to the virtual machine that you're in and you would capture those requests and be able to see them. Like it's a really simple way to be able to see that. And I think setting up two virtual machines that actually do that wouldn't be too difficult. Just to be able to get a handle on like what T-Shark looks like when you're actively uh, capturing packets and then then doing some of the like packet analysis that we actually got to do. And I think that would have kind of made the labs just a little bit more interactive and a little bit more fun in terms of like, okay, so like now you have to capture the packets and now you have to analyze and then, you know, capture a flag that way. 
um, instead of simply just kind of like copying the commands for that. It, yeah, it was fun, but it was all, it wasn't it wasn't as interactive as a, as it could have been. At the start of this week, I started doing the Metasploit framework course with Alexis Ahmed. Metasploit. This course is mainly just to do with Metasploit framework and how to use the actual tool, uh, which I've really appreciated. So, so far I've covered up to enumeration. Um, I'm hoping to finish the rest of this course this week. It's like a pretty big one, but I think if I can dedicate about two hours, two hours a day to it, um, completing the labs and watching the videos, taking notes and all of that, I think I'll be able to do it. Um, so I think week four I would have by then, hopefully, finish Metasploit Framework. Fingers crossed. But so far, in Alexis's other courses, he's been using Metasploit a lot. So he's been showing us, like in the exploitation course, he's been showing us how to exploit something uh, manually and how to look for manual exploitation, but also how to use um, the Metasploit Framework, which has been really cool. Generally, with Metasploit, I hear a lot of people um, and I think like there's probably good reason for it. Uh, I hear a lot of people being like, Metasploit is for script kiddies and that's for like noobs and stuff. <laughs> when you're first, like me, when you're first getting into this, it can be a little bit overwhelming knowing exactly where to look for exploits, where to look for vulnerabilities and all of that. For example, if you are doing like any blue box in like hack the box, dry hack me, uh, or anything like that, you would know that like blue has the eternal blue vulnerability. And so being able to exploit that using Metasploit when you've never been able to exploit a box before and get root and everything, like just get in there. That's a really good feeling. I know that's a noob thing to say. And I know that Metasploit isn't, isn't meant to be relied on like I think it is. Um, by new people like me, but using Metasploit to kind of help you along when you start, I think is a good idea. But eventually be able to learn Ruby, so then I can actually modify the exploits and when I run into problems with the exploits that I'm using, that I can actually troubleshoot and go, okay, the reason why this module isn't working is because of X, Y, and Z and actually modify it and fix it up. I wanna be able to add my own modules so that I can automate tasks that's why like HD Moore designed Metasploit for himself. He made it so that his workflow could be a lot easier as a pen tester. Um, and I think it's just a tool, like it's 100% a tool. And so I'm excited to learn about it. Like I'm excited to be able to understand its full potential and use it to its full potential because I think if we don't use it to its full potential, we can miss out on something that can be really helpful. They're my thoughts on Metasploit, take it or leave it. But in terms of the the first kind of labs that we used, there was a one really cool lab that I really appreciated how it was set up. So basically you have So talking about lab setups, I'm currently setting up a lab. So I'm setting up a Windows server uh, and a couple of clients. I want to set up some services from the first course that I did on exploitation um, so then I can go through the process of like of information gathering and enumeration and then um, vulnerability assessment and then exploitation and see what I can do from there um, so I think it's it's taking a while because I don't have a lot of time to be able to invest into that but I've been really enjoying you know setting it up but yeah so that's been my last week of EJPT learning stuff. If you've enjoyed this video, found help, please like, leave a comment, tell me how you're going in your hacking journey, and we'll see you soon.